In this video, let's take a close look at the inside of the Statue of Liberty. We'll take a quick look at the history, how the statue was built, and where you can go on the inside. This video was made possible by NordVPN. The statue's official name is Liberty Enlightening the World, but today it's known as the Statue of Liberty. It was a gift to the United States from the people of France in the year 1886. If we zoom in on Europe, right here is France. And across the ocean over here is the United States. The Statue of Liberty is right here on the East Coast. If we zoom in here, you can see the state of New York and the state of New Jersey. Right in between the two states is the Upper Bay, often called the New York Harbor. The Statue of Liberty is here, on Liberty Island. And if we zoom out again, you can see Manhattan, with all of its famous New York buildings. Here's Governor's Island, another popular tourist destination, and right here is Ellis Island, where many immigrants entered the United States from 1892 to 1954. As boats sailed into the harbor, the Statue of Liberty would be one of the first views that immigrants would see coming to the United States. The Statue of Liberty has come to be known as a symbol of freedom. In her right hand, she holds a torch. And in her left hand, she holds a tablet that has the date of the Declaration of Independence in Roman numerals. One thing you can't see from the ground is a broken shackle and chain. This is meant to symbolize the end of slavery. The statue is 46 meters tall. If you count from the ground up, it's 93 meters tall. That's about as tall as a 20-story building. Here is the size of a person in comparison to the statue's big toe. When it was complete in 1886, it was the tallest statue in the world. But that title is now held by the Statue of Unity in India. The Statue of Liberty is made up of copper. That's right, it was originally the color of a penny. It only took about 20 years for the air and rain to slowly oxidize the metal and turn it the color green. The copper metal has a thickness of only 2.4 millimeters. That's less than the thickness of two American pennies. The statue was built in pieces, and a statue this big takes a lot of planning. The statue was designed by the French sculptor Frédéric Auguste Bartholdi. First, he made the initial sculpture out of clay. This was only 1.2 meters high. The average adult is a little taller than this. Next, a larger version would be twice the size and would be made out of plaster. The next version would be much bigger. This is one-fourth the size of the full statue. At each stage of enlargement, Bartholdi would be able to further perfect the details of the statue. For the full-size version, it had to be built in pieces so it would fit inside the workshop. At one point, to raise money, the finished version of the statue's head was displayed in France, and the right arm and torch was displayed in the United States. Visitors could pay money to climb to the top of each of these. So how do we get from the plaster model of the statue to the finished copper version? Well, the final version was made out of sheets of copper. They used a method called repoussé. Here's how this works. They would take pieces of the full-size plaster model of the statue and build a wooden mold right up next to it. This would then be used to shape the pieces of copper. They would hammer them in place until they would fit the shape of the wooden mold. After that, the copper was supported on the inside with iron straps. Now we have a completed piece of the Statue of Liberty. By themselves, these pieces would never be able to hold their own weight. It needs a supporting structure, and this was designed by Gustav Eiffel. His name might sound familiar to you. Just a few years later, he would go on to help build the Eiffel Tower in Paris, France. The Statue of Liberty has an iron pylon at the very center. You can think of this as the spine to the Statue of Liberty. Then smaller support beams were built around this to support the copper pieces of the statue. The structure would allow the statue to sway in the wind by up to 12 centimeters at the very top. This was all first built in Paris, France, and it took almost 10 years to build.
Then, once completed, it was taken apart into 350 different pieces. All of this was shipped across the ocean to the United States. It took another four months to reassemble the statue on top of the pedestal. The French paid for the statue itself, but the United States paid for the pedestal. When the statue was finished in 1886, this was called Bedloe's Island, but today we call it Liberty Island. The Statue of Liberty has received a few renovations over the years. One of these renovations was the torch. It had been damaged and was leaking rainwater. It was replaced in the 1980s. The original torch is still on display. I'll show you where later in the video. To get to Liberty Island, you have to take the ferry, unless you're a really good swimmer, but I don't recommend that. A ferry leaves from two places, Liberty State Park in New Jersey and the Battery on the southern tip of Manhattan. It takes about 15 minutes to get to Liberty Island. The island has a land area of just under 15 acres. This is Flagpole Plaza, the Information Center, Cafe and Bookstore, and the Gift Shop. This is the Statue of Liberty Museum. This was opened in 2019, so it's still fairly new. We head down this way to get to the statue. There's plenty of areas to walk around here. That way you can see the statue up close from any angle you choose. The base of the statue looks like a star shape. This is the remnants of an old military base called Fort Wood. It was used in the early 1800s, but now it's the base of the Statue of Liberty. This part is called the pedestal. When you buy a pedestal ticket, you can go anywhere on top of the base of the statue and all the way up to the observation deck. If you want to go inside the statue, you'll need to buy a ticket to go all the way up to the crown. It's a little harder to get a hold of one of these tickets. You usually have to reserve a few weeks or even months in advance. However, since the pandemic, you can still go to the island, but the public isn't allowed into any part of the pedestal or statue. Hopefully that'll change soon. To get to the inside of the statue, we'll enter from here. These doors are called the centennial doors. Remember that you have to have a pedestal ticket to go inside. Enter here to get into the pedestal lobby. The original torch to the Statue of Liberty used to be right here in the center. When the museum opened in 2019, the torch was moved over there. So now the pedestal lobby is wide open again. The old museum used to be here in this area, but now most everything has been moved over to the new museum. Now it's time to make our way to the top of the pedestal. You've got two options. The elevator is here, or the stairs are here. There are 192 steps to the top of the pedestal. Inside here you can see the stairs to go up and the stairs to climb back down on the other side. There are seven floors inside the pedestal. So this is 1P, 2P, and all the way up to 7P, the very top. At level 3P you can go outside and view the surrounding areas. And at level 6P is the official observation deck. You can go outside either here or here. Once outside, you'll get a good 360 degree view of anywhere in the harbor. If you have a ticket to go up to the crown, then head up to level 7P. This is where you start your climb up to the top of the statue. This is called the double helix stairway. One way up, and the other way to come back down. These stairs fit right in the middle of the support structure. There's not a lot of room on here, and I hope you're not afraid of heights. If you get tired, there are a few resting places. And just in case, there's also an emergency elevator inside of the statue, not for regular public use. It carries only three people and can stop at a few of the platforms along the spiral stairway. During your climb, you'll be able to see the metal framework that holds up the statue. You can even see the individual ripples of the statue's dress. And finally, we reach the top of the spiral stairs. This area is called the crown. Only a limited number of people can be up here at once. It's a great place to look out of the windows onto the harbor. There's a total of 25 windows on the crown. On the inside, you can even see the individual patterns of the statue's hair. On the back, you'll also notice some lights that will be turned on at night. Once you are finished up here, you can start making your way down the other side of the double helix stairway. 
a lot of people ask about the torch. In 1916, there was an explosion in New York Harbor that damaged the statue. Since then, they've never reopened the torch for public access. However, maintenance workers still have to occasionally climb the torch. Right at the statue's neck, you can see the gate that gives access to the arm. Once through here, there's a long ladder up the arm. It's not the easiest climb. Then onto another ladder, and at the very top, there's a tiny door that opens up to the fresh air outside. So hopefully, COVID restrictions will continue to ease up and visits will once again be allowed inside of the statue. In the meantime, let's go ahead and check out NordVPN. They've been a long time sponsor of my channel, which is really helpful as I continue to make these animations. NordVPN is an app that encrypts your internet traffic, which means your browsing data is kept private. This also means you can unblock content or websites that would normally be blocked. For example, maybe there's a game or a TV show that's only available in certain parts of the world. Well, NordVPN has over 3,500 servers in 59 different countries. Once connected, you can make it appear as though you are browsing from somewhere else in the world. NordVPN is really easy to use. Let me show you. Open up the app, you can choose a country, or just click on the Quick Connect button. Then you're good to go. Now just browse the internet like you normally would. Visit nordvpn.com slash jaredowen or use my coupon code to get a huge discount on a two-year plan plus a bonus gift. My name's Jared, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.